Hi guys! Today we've got a really interesting tidbit of information that is just one more piece of the puzzle when it comes to our not so distant future and technology such as medbeds and teleportation. As many of you know, I take an optimistic but contemplative and cautious approach to the advancements that have not been officially recognized yet. We know that they've lied to us for years, but we aren't going there in this video. Instead, we are going to examine something that has been right in front of our eyes and we never saw it. There wasn't a big deal about it, like with comets and solar flares, but our government paid for the very technology advancements that are being officially denied. $1.2 billion over five very peculiar years. But first, let's go back. Last year I did a video on quantum computing that YouTube did upload but Google refused to run ads on. That always makes my ears perk up and tells me that they don't want me talking about it for some reason, right? I don't curse or have anything objectionable to people. If anything, I promote peace, love, and unity. So why doesn't Google want information on quantum computing getting out? Well, not so long ago, we were being fed the narrative that quantum tech is speculative science fiction. Today, it's a different story. And when asked if quantum technology is real, this is what the chat GPT AI engine said, yes, quantum technology is real. It refers to a range of emerging technologies based on the principles of quantum mechanics, which is the fundamental theory in physics that describes nature at the smallest scales like atoms and subatomic particles. So at least they are owning up to its existence and gave me some real-world examples of quantum technology. First, there's quantum computing, and companies like IBM, Google, and Microsoft are developing quantum computers, which use qubits instead of classical bits, enabling certain types of calculations to be done exponentially faster. So there's Google suppressing the information at the same time they were developing the technology. What a shock, huh? Next, there is quantum cryptography, which uses quantum key distribution, or QKD, which allows ultra-secure communication. And it's actually used in research and some limited real-world applications, like government and military communications. Then there's quantum sensors, which are these extremely sensitive devices for measuring things like time, gravity, magnetic fields, and so forth. These have applications that include navigation without GPS and medical imaging. I mean, navigation without GPS sounds like something that is used in intergalactic travel, doesn't it? Lastly, the engine cited quantum teleportation and communication stating that experiments have successfully transmitted quantum states between particles over long distances. This is really the groundwork for the quantum internet, so we're finally getting mainstream sources to admit to the existence of such sophisticated technologies, but do you remember that I said that the proof of its existence was always right in front of our eyes? Before we get into the point of this video, let me remind you to hit the like button, Leave a comment, subscribe, and share this video with others on all of your platforms. If you'd like to further support this self-funded disclosure channel, I have memberships as low as $3.99 a month, and there are always one-time super thanks tips of any amount below the video. They restrict what I can put on the shop button to only items related to this content, but check it out. There might be something that I've chosen that you'll like. And lastly, my online book is available, which is a simple but comprehensive guide about foods that you can take for various conditions, such as high blood pressure or arthritis. It's inexpensive and I hope very informative. Okay, so let's see what these guys have been doing to take us into a quantum universe while fighting about everything under the sun. This is where the National Quantum Initiative Act comes into play which was signed into law by President Donald Trump on December 21st, 2018. I never heard about this, did you? 
At first, I thought maybe it was an executive order that was signed under the cover of night, but I was wrong. The National Quantum Initiative Act, or NQI Act, was not an executive order. It was a bipartisan law passed overwhelmingly by the United States Congress with a unanimous vote in the Senate. We had an extremely fractured Congress since Trump took over, who fights forever about renaming military bases, but they are in overwhelming agreement over something like money for quantum exploration, and we don't hear a peep from them. In fact, this legislative measure authorizes approximately $1.2 billion over five years, structured with $75 million from 2019 through 2023, for agencies like the National Institute of Standards and Technology, the National Science Foundation, and the Department of Energy, with annual allocations such as $125 million for the Department of Defense, $80 million for the National Institute of Standards and Technology, and $50 million for the National Science Foundation to support quantum information science. So, the funding occurred over two years while Donald Trump was in office and three years while Biden was in office, which I also found quite odd. I mean, Joe Biden didn't promote any notions of scientific exploration and focused primarily on immigration and DEI initiatives. It was more than just funding that Congress created. They actually established the National Quantum Coordination Office to oversee efforts, while multidisciplinary centers for quantum research and education were established at institutions like NIST, NSF, and DOE. Lastly, Congress mandated a National Quantum Initiative Advisory Committee to provide guidance. Funding was directed toward advancing quantum technologies for applications in cryptography, material science, and national security, the catch-all. Now, I could be wrong, but that seems like a lot of money and effort for a technology that they insisted didn't exist. So, let's take a look at this law that Congress passed together at a time when they couldn't cooperatively decide anything. Funding for the NQI Act's specific programs technically expired on September 30, 2023, but QIS research has continued through existing agency budgets and related authorizations, such as those under the CHIPS and Science Act. The NQI program itself remains active through 2029, with significant bipartisan efforts to reauthorize and expand it via H.R. 6213 and S. 5411, proposing $1.8 to $2.7 billion over 2025 through 2029. These bills aim to enhance practical applications and maintain U.S. leadership in quantum technology, but have not yet passed. So the specific funding allocations outlined in the original NQI Act for various agencies expired on September 30, 2023. To be clear, the broader NQI program, established to coordinate QIS efforts across federal agencies, was authorized through December 21, 2029, as per the Act. So the Act itself didn't expire in 2024 or at any point, but its specific funding authorizations for 2019 to 2023 lapsed at the end of fiscal year 2023. No new funds have been specifically authorized under the original Act as the original text didn't provide for automatic funding beyond fiscal year 2023. After September 30, 2023, QIS research has continued through existing agency budgets and discretionary appropriations, not tied directly to the Act's original authorizations. For example, the NQI supplement to the President's 2025 budget, released December 18, 2024 during the end of the Biden administration, reported that federal agencies spent approximately $1 billion on quantum research and development in 2022, and similar levels of investment have likely persisted into 2024 and 2025 across the various agencies.
These funds come from broader agency budgets or other legislative vehicles, not the expired Act authorizations. Also, the Chips and Science Act, signed August 2022, authorized additional quantum information services funding, including $100 million annually for fiscal years 2023 through 2027, for the Department of Education to develop quantum and network infrastructure and support QIS research. This funding, while aligned with the National Quantum Initiative goals, is authorized under a separate law, not the NQI Act itself. Boy guys, we need to get control of this money train. There's money all over the place, but people in the country are homeless and dying. Two bipartisan bills have been introduced to reauthorize and expand the NQI Act, but neither has been passed into law. H.R. 6213, National Quantum Initiative Reauthorization Act, was introduced in November 2023 during Biden's watch. It proposes another $1.8 billion over 2025, 2029 for DOE, NSF, NISD and NASA to fund new quantum research centers, workforce programs, and test beds, which allow researchers to build, test, and refine quantum technologies, which may or may not include the technology known as medbeds. It passed the House Committee on Science, Space, and Technology in July 2024, but for some reason has not been enacted. Senate Bill 5411 National Quantum Initiative Reauthorization Act, introduced in December 2024, authorizes $2.7 billion over 2025 to 2029 and extends the National Quantum Initiative Program to 2035, with a focus on commercialization and new agency involvement, including NIH and the SBA. It remains under consideration. Both proposed acts emphasize expanding testbeds to accelerate the transition from research to practical applications. While not yet passed, these bills continue to enjoy bipartisan support and are a priority for the House Science Committee and Senate Commerce Committee. So it's clear that planet Earth is going quantum big time and very soon, but why is this sitting on the sidelines? In summary, Congress worked together to pass a law in a very bipartisan way, which Trump signed for the purpose of developing quantum technology. Money flowed, something has been developed somewhere, and while the act itself hasn't expired, the money for it has. But nobody seems worried, and the money is coming in through alternate sources for some reason, even though the Congress didn't reauthorize funding under Biden or Trump so far. What happened? Why were they so jazzed on this law in 2018 and now nobody, not even Doge, is questioning alternative sources funding the quantum initiative? The core quantum program remains authorized through December 21, 2029, but without official funding. Why? Are they so busy worrying about Doge linking them to NGOs? Or is the program ready to go and paused and wait for the right time? These are the things that keep me up at night. I know that numerous quantum technologies, including energy field manipulation, are pivotal to the development of the healing medbeds. So despite official dismissal of such technology, we have been openly developing it for years. And you know, it was classified for some time before that. While Doge's mandate focuses on modernizing federal technology and reducing waste, it has been silent on the Quantum Initiative, but we know that Doge has not cut funding supporting the National Quantum Initiative or its related programs. So there you go, guys. Rather than fighting like cats and dogs, Congress is united in their treatment of the U.S. Quantum Program, which brings the question to mind, is this all an act at this point? Are our leaders following a script and playing a role of either bad guy or good guy? Can they all really be that stupid and blatantly corrupt? Or is it all for our benefit? I know my thoughts, but I'd love to hear yours.
Is it real? Are governments hiding something that's about to bust open very soon? I present this information to help you find these answers in your own heart. Arthur Schopenhauer, a German philosopher who influenced later thinkers like Nietzsche, Freud, and even Einstein, is quoted as saying, All truth passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Second, it is violently opposed. Third, it is accepted as being self-evident. We are approaching or in the state of being self-evident.